the needed products are the lens, the Sentinel image, that is the S1 RTC, one, RTC. We use the ESA world cover, uh, world cover to be able to confirm our, our classification, the GEM of the study area, so that we can be able to disseminate and discriminate the heights. Now, our background, we know all of us that floods are the most important hazard in Africa in terms of frequency and magnitudes. More than droughts and war, many countries are susceptible to many natural hazards. Disasters kills more people in Africa than elsewhere in the world. That is it. So, so it's very important to carry out some exercise of how we are going to assess the flood in our, in our home. So flooding causes major disruptions in cities and areas with agricultural activities. This leads to significant impacts on economy, people and on environments. Earth observation systems are useful in monitoring water extent, particularly in areas where rivers are not equipped with gauge. When it comes to flood management, the SAR is the most preferable microwave radar due to its ability to differentiate between water and objects and other objects. So that's why radar has been chosen so that we can be able to penetrate the cloud. You know, during the, the rainy season, the cloud covers the sky. So it's very difficult to be able to get some satellite imagery that are not covered with bed with uh, radar data, we can be able to, to get such data. So after that, we have to carry out the urbanization study of the, our area. So the land use land cover of our area will be carried out. And we know that urban area account for a small proportion of global land cover, but support daily human life and exert a great influence on environmental and ecological changes. This means that urban area using both optical and radar data. One of the simplest is k-means clustering. That's is, we use the unsupervised classification for the classification we use for our own area. So after that, we could be able to map the vulnerable area and the less vulnerable and the highly vulnerable area of our, our, of our study. This notebook used K-means clustering to classify land as urban. Then compare those results with the ESA World Cover Global Land Cover products for the year 2020. The choice of the number of clusters to use for the K-means clustering and the pixel value that represent the urban land cover class can be informed by comparing the prediction image with the ground truth data sets. So since we cannot go to the fields, as I said uh, early on, we use the ESA world cover, global land cover that we use at the ground truth data set. So this notebook contains the following steps. We have the selection, we select a location and term name for the analysis. And the location we choose in Nigeria is in Nigeria, where we have an area called Lokoja. So we load the data, the Sentinel one backscatter data for the area of interest. So we convert the digital number to, de to decibel values for analysis. A median was generated concerning the VH and the VV polarization. And we performed the K-means clustering of the median composite image. We show the K-means clustering urbanization prediction image. We load the ESA world cover data for the year 2020. 
We compare the urbanization prediction with the ground truth, the data visually and statistically. We did the water change detection, extraction of the flooded area, the DM generation, and the vulnerability map. So when getting started, we, we first of us load the package. We all know we have to load the package since we are using the Python. So we use the Python package. So this is it. After then we set up a dark, a, a dask cluster. The dask can be used to better manage memory use down and conduct the analysis in parallel for an, an introduction to using DAS with digital edge Africa. So we are going to get all those things in our, in our notebook. So we can recommend opening the DAS processing window to view the different computation that have been executed to do this. We are going to see our DAS dashboard in the Africa session. So you can click on this link so that you can be able to see what we are talking about uh, concerning the setup of DAS cluster. The use that's the set of the local computation cluster using the cell below. Now we are going to run. We create our local cluster. So we run this site. I have not run this one. Let me run from the from the up so that you can know what I've loaded. Okay, so this is our clustering. These are the information we get concerning where our cluster is located. Now we connect to our data cube. We run the data cube so that we can be able to, to connect to our data cube. The analysis parameters have been selected. We have the central latitude, the central longitude, the buffering, and the time range. Uh, those are the parameters we are going to use. And then this is it. Our area, the, the, the central lats of our area, this is the coordinate, the central longitude of our area. And we did a buffering of uh, 0.05. Then we combine the large long with their respective buffer to get area of interest. These are area of interest. Okay. These are area of interest. These are, you see, this is the river Benue, and this is the river Niger. So the two river meet here. So it's an important area where people carry out agriculture, and also there are some people living around the area. So we are going to study the impacts of the floods in this area. Okay. So the Sentinel one have been, have been loaded. You can see it. That is our area. Now we are going to load our Sentinel one, sorry. We are going to load our, our Sentinel one data. We know already that we choose the latitude long, that is the X and Y, and the time range. The time range is is 2020, 21, sorry, 2020. And we choose from August to September, to, from July to September. The resolution of our data is 20 meter. And we know that when talking about Radar data, we are talking about polarization. Those are the VV and VH. So when loading the data, the first step in the analysis is to load the Sentinel-1 backscatter data for the specified area of interest. This uses the predefined loads, art, 
utility function. The loader function is used here to load an analysis ready data set free of charge and missing data. So that's what we use to get our data. So the data have been gotten, these are the parameters that follows. So we have seven images that we got from that period of time. Okay. So we if it, if it three have been done for the images. And during the fee, after the filtering, there is a conversion of digital number value to decibel value. It's important in this. It's that one black scatter data is provided as digital number. So which can be converted to black scatter in decibel units using the function 10 times log 10 GN. It is often useful to convert the backscatter to decibel for analysis because the backscatter in decibel units has a more symmetric noise profile and less skewed value distribution for easier statistical evaluation. So it has been convert, we convert the DN to decibel. You can see it here. We use the, the formula that is here for the conversion. Okay. So we can view our data. I've told you that we have a VH and VV in our own data here. And you know, we have VH, VV, you can see have some other, that's HH, okay? But in our own year, the star polarization is a key factor in flood detection. The HH polarization, that is horizontal polarization image are more adequate for flood detection than the vertical or cross polarized image. The horizontal polarization gives the highest distinction in bus scatter value between dry and wet forest area. For this practical exercise, the available image during the flood had an intensity VV and VH polarization. So the VV polarization was preferred because the major incident angle of data makes this image suitable for flood monitoring. So we are going to use the VV, you can see it. Which one, this one is more clearer than the VH. So I've told you that when we were downloading our data, we are loading our data, we have types seven images that we got for those that period from July to September. So this zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Keep it in mind because we are going to use that number here because that is the image we are going to use. When we look, we check out the image, the number six, that's first, in the period of 2021, 08 was used. So this is it for 2021, 07, this is July, this is September. So when we look at the images, we can concludes that the size of the water here is, is bigger than the size of this water here. But let us confirm whether it's true or not, whether it's water or not. And we know that when talking about radar, the water are shown in black. So for now, from the water, and uh, we can see that the water during September, there's an increase in extent. The VH and the VH over 
vive. I have explained so far that we are going to use the VV polarization for our data because it is showing is more clearer when looking at it than the VH. After then we plot so that we can be able to get our thresholds because we are going to use the the binarization model. So we are going to classify the, our data into two, the water and the non-water. Okay, so what is going to happen? You see this graph, this graphic, you can see here, this is the blue color shows the area after the flooding before the flooding. And this one show area after the flooding. Okay? And we can see, when talking about thresholds, that is the area where we can start noticing that there's differentiation between water and, and the land. So that's what we use. And we calculate our threshold that gave us minus 14.231. So there is a separation between the water and the non-water. We first of all did it for July. And later we did it for September. So you can see, we have the non-water, and this is the water in July. This also is non-water, and this is water for September. So after getting this, we carry out the change detection. So what has changed over between July and September, that's what we are going to, to carry out to study to see whether there's a change or not. So to get this, to calculate the change, we subtract the DS September minus DS July. So we have water appears, and we have permanent water, and water disappears. So we have three parameters we are going to use, OK? Water appears means that there were no water there before and we noticed water. Permanent water is, we got water there before, we see how water there. Water disappear means that we get water there before, but we are not getting water anymore. So we water appear, we give the color pink. The water disappear, we give the color yellow. And the blue color is Okay. So after getting this during our data chain detection, we plot it. We water to water, water to no water, and no water to water. Okay. This is what we got. So you see the same area now is as if we superimpose the July data with the September data, okay? So we notice that this blue means that there were water. That means that it's July. We are having water here. And this yellow, that is, a, is just a dot, in a, this is just a dot of, of some areas. So those are the yellow. It may be due to some some, it depends on the image, okay? And also now, 
There were no water before, and uh, we get water where we have this color. The creamy or which color can we call it? The pink. Yeah, pink, okay. Thank you. So the pink color shows us that there were no, there were no water here before, because this blue, we cannot say that yet is July, but we know all that is July. Now we superimpose the September data. Now we, come, we notice that when during the September minus July, we can notice that there are some additional data that are using the threshold to separate the water from the non-water. So here now we can clearly say that this is water, okay? And it has been increased. If there is increase in water, that means that we can call it floods. For now, we cannot say that we know that the extent of the water has increased. Okay. Now, after that, we are going to carry out the land use land cover classification. Why are we called carrying out the land use land cover classification? We are carrying out so that you can be able to see. If this those color, this pink color, did not fall on the agricultural lands or on urban lands, so we are going to calculate and see whether those area falls within the urban lands or agricultural lands. So to do it, as I said, it, we will use the unsupervised classification, and here we are using the car means clustering. Okay, so let us, we use, the, for, to start this, we define our function to use for the car means clustering. This is the function that has been defined that take the predicted X array, X array data and we plot it. We display the predicted data set with up to six unique classes. So we have six unique classes. Those are the different colors that we give to our classes. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we use the, the scaling flattening function to convert the data sets or data array into a two-dimensional NOPSI array. Later, it will be standard, we standardize the data. It, Dictionary has been created to be able to save the, the results. And we perform the car means clustering on the input data set for each number of cluster in the cluster range list. And we've, we said so far that we are going to use the VV polarization on which we are going to work on. So, we enter the selected polarization to include in the classification. That is it, the band VV, we define it, that does what we are going to use. Now we run the k-means classification and then plot the results. So, we classify for July. We are going to show you the urban area, the land use land cover of the, our study area for July and for September also. So we use two cluster. You have two, three, and four. Okay, so we have two cluster, we have three cluster, we have four cluster. We use it for July and we are going to use it for September also. And we are going to plot each of the predicted images. So here for the first one, for the K-means clustering, we have two cluster, the yellow and the brown. And for the July, when having three clusters, we have 
green, brown, and yellow. For the first, the fourth cluster, we have one, two, three, four classes. That is green, dark blue, the brown, and yellow. Now for July, for September, we did the same operation so that we can be able to get whether there's changes during July, from July to December. This is this July, uh, September, three clusters, the same thing. And here we have four clusters. So to decide on which model and classes to assign as urban, we look at our different images and look at the cluster that matches our area, depending on our, our knowledge on the area. So if we know very well the area and know the area very well, we choose the number three, the, three, the, the number that have the three clusters. So this is the one that have the yellow, the brown, and the green. So we have two, three classes here now that we are going to use for our classification. That's what we wrote here. Mass data set will return the pixels which are most likely to be urban or built up area. Okay. So from the plot that predicted images about the best number of clusters to use is a three clusters. So we set the key to number three and we set the pixel value to number two. So what does that mean? We are telling the system that we are going to use this key the number three concert, and we are going to call the urban value is number two. So since the urban value is number two, so anything that have this color and if you be here is going to be called urban area. So the crossing predictor for July and the crossing predictor for September. This is this. This is for July. Urban area. This is for September. For the urban area. The predicted urban area. So after we did this, we should be able to, be, to get to the fields and see whether what we call the urban is really urban or not. So we are going to use the ESA world cover as a ground truth data for the confirmation of our data, of our, our classification. So we, we will compare the performance of the urban area K means clustering classification results against a built up area map for the study area, which we derive from the ESA world cover global 10 meta land use land cover data from 2020. So the resolution of that data is 10 meta and the period of, of that data is uh, for 2020. So we are going to obtain the validation of our data sets by loading, first of all, we load the ESA word cover data. This is it. And to load it, this is what we use. We want to plot land use land cover of ESA classification. What is the product? The product is called ESA. These are the legends, and we, this is the title we gave to the to the land use land cover of Ezal work cover. So we can see in our area of study, we have built up that is the red, the cropland violet, the grass are yellow. The, the shrub 
lungs is dark yellow. The tree cover is deep green. Where we have red, a black, we call it no data, but for now, we don't have any area that has not been given a name, so it's correct. So since in our area, for now, there's no snow and ice, so this color is not showing. The beer, the, the beer soil or vegetation, you can show the gray. The permanent water body is blue. You have it here. The herbaceous wetlands, that is green. Here. Okay. We don't have mangrove in our area of study. For this area of study, there's no mangrove. And the moss and lichen, we don't have it. So this is what we are going to use as ground routine for our own classification. So we plot the Eza urban area alongside with the cabin estimated from S1. So this is the Eza what called that bit of land cover. And this is what we got as our own classification. So we can notice that there are some areas that are missing. We are missing some information here. So during the classification, our system will have taken some area as non-urban and take some area that are urban, that are not urban as urban. So we plot the bit of area land cover from ESA work cover data sets. This is it. This is the element that I will help us to, the code that helps us to, to plot it. So now that we have our own area that we classify, and this is the, the ESA world cover bit of area. What is going to happen? We are going to calculate the accuracy. We are going to assess the accuracy of our classification to see whether our classification is acceptable or not. What we are going to do, we use this formula, accuracy assessment metric. We use function from the SKLearns dot matrix module to evaluate the K-mean clustering classification Accuracy is used when the truth positive and truth negative are more important, while F1 score is used when the first negative and first positive are crucial. Those are the formula. So we are going to get the metric from the K-means clustering. We are going to get the producer's accuracy, the user's accuracy, and the overall accuracy and the F1 score. So these are the code that we use to get them. Okay. So after then we print the, our results. To print our results for the overall accuracy, we have 90.64. The F, F1 score that's 0.72. The producer's accuracy is 74.44. The user's accuracy is 69.35, which is acceptable. Okay. So, since we have this accuracy, that is 69, that is user accuracy, that is 69.35, and the producer accuracy is 74. So we can confirm that, okay, let us adopt this and accept it as good as a good classification. So now we have adopted our, our classification. Now we are comparing the accuracy. Now we move to check what has happened during our classification in the error that we made. So we are going to, to plot our, our data. So 
So here is the view top area, MACP crossing result. And we can see the first positive. That means that the first positive means that is a, is a built up area, but it shows us some other color. And the first green, So we have the first positive and the first negative and the true positive. The white one is true positive. And the red is the first negative. And the green is the first positive. So the first positive is the first error. <laughs> Okay, so as I said before, what is not BTOP has been declared as BTOP in our classification. So that is the error that we made. I know that this uh, first negative, that is a... What is not negative, that means that is a really BTOP, what we got. Okay. So we are going to compare now the ESA wall cover bit of land cover with our k mean clustering predicted image of September. So we are moving. These are urban area mapping of September. So we compare here the Eza World Cover Bit Top area with uh, the predicted image of September. Now for each of them, we produce the producer accuracies, the user accuracies, the overall accuracies, and the F1 score. We did it for September and we did it for July. So for September, this is each, the data for accuracy. You see showing the same information, the first positive, the first negative and true positive. The first of positive, as I was saying, it, it, it has categorized the bit up to not bit up in reality. And uh, the first negative categorized not to bit up, but to bit up in reality. So after then, so we can be able now to compare the area, what has happened. Since we have already, we did the water ascent already. Now we did the bit of land cover, land use land cover of our area. We are going to overlay all of them and see what is going to, to happen. This is it. We have the urban area that is red. We have the vegetation in green. We have water to water. That's the permanent water. We have water to no water. That is a water disappear. And the wa no water to water. So this pink color, there were no water and we are having water. So we overlay all of them. The water essence of September and July, we overlay the bit of uh, the land use land cover of our Saudi area so that we can be able to differentiate and see what area have been covered by, by the floods. 
So what are we going to do is to do the change detection if you want. Using the change detection detects which area of the built up area have been covered with water. But before then, we try to do the floor risk assessment using the elevation data. So we load the the, um, the 30 meter products. So these are DM that we loaded. And we have the lowest area is 50, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400 on that area. And we are talking about meta. So we now try. Because when talking about floods, the area that are, the first area that are flooded are the area that are low, okay? So we want to assign an elevation to the area that are low. And we know that the area that are low here is of green color. That is the one we wrote here, 50, one and zero. And the medium height, is greater or equal to 100 meter. And the, slower, the, the smaller one, the, the low area or the low elevation is greater or equal to 50. So we plot the flood prone built up area and the crop land together now. Since now we know the area that is low and the area that is high, we've created this here, we did not plot it but we can still plot it. So we have the affected urban area, we have the affected vegetation, we have the affected urban, the affected vegetation because we have two dates, okay? And we have the unaffected urban area aid on the unaffected vegetation area. These are the results. We go from here. So the reds color is high flooded prone built up area. So that are the built up that are prone to flood. It can be, that can be affected by have been affected by the by water. The, color, the yellow color are the area of the crop land that have been affected. And the brown color is the area that has affected, but they are medium. And the green color is the color that have been affected as crop land. And the area that not been affected are this area. And unaffected crop land are the ones that are deep green. So we can see that water affected all the crop that are along this side. And here is a cultivated area. Here also there's a cultivation that people carry out. It has been flooded, okay? Here also, but this area have been affected, but not as high as this that are yellow. This urban area, when talking about human being that can be affected, we have this area, this red one have been affected, so that they are vulnerable to flood. Those are the areas that have been affected. And after getting these results, we did the calculation of the area affected and the crop that are affected. So we calculate, we calculated the area of the flood prone built up area and crop land. 
we have the area affected urban, we calculate the area because we know already the length of the pixel. Okay, we calculated also the area, area affected by the crop lands in terms of, of high, medium, and unaffected. And here are the data that we are going to print. We have the bit up area highly prone, the crop land that, area that is highly prone to flooding, and the bit up area medium prone to flooding, crop land area medium prone to flooding, bit up area unaffected to flooding. And we have the crop land area unaffected to flooding. That's the legend we are going to get because we are going to calculate the areas that have been affected. So this is what, we, when we print it, we have T 3.275 square meters for the area that, the bit up area that has been affected by flood. Concerning the crop land, we have 9.685 square meters of the area that's been highly affected by the floods. That is crop land. We have the built up area that is medially, medial, that is is a medium prone area and uh, the area covered is about 15.664 square meters. And the crop land area that, uh, that, are made, that have been affected by is about 3.506 square meters. Is not highly affected. Is a is a, a an area medially pr is prone is a, slightly prone to floods. Okay, we have the built up area that now be affected. That is two point three four square meters. We have the crop land the crop land area that have now be affected. Zero point nine eighty four square meter. So when look at it, is is as if the whole crop land have been affected. So we calculate now and plug a graph that allow us to show what has really happened during that period. So we calculate first of all the total crop land and the total urban areas. So for the total crop land, we have 14.172 square meters. And for the total urban area, we have 21.279 square meters. So this is what has happened. We're talking about area that, are, that have been affected. We have our crop land bar showing total affected urban area. The urban area, this is it. This is the total urban area affected. This is the area that has been highly affected. And we have the information here, highly affected urban area, that is 3.275 square meter. And the crop land is 9.685 square meter. This is the one we have here as, as data highly affected as crop lands. This is highly affected as urban area. We have the urban area that's are slightly affected. This is the area we have up to 15.664 square meter that have been affected. And uh, the area that have, have not been affected, this is it. Concerning the crop land, this is the same thing. So we have for the crop land that has been highly affected, we have 9.685 square meter. The crop lands that have been slightly affected, we have 3.506 square meter. And for the crop land that have not been affected, we have 0.982 square meters. I think we, we have to stop to this because I, I, I spent all the one hour to explain it. Ken, are you there? Thank you so much, Yajemi. You see, you're yeah. like a professor. Uh, once you start, you really giving us very good information. And uh, I just wish to pause and see if we have some questions from the audience. 
since everybody's quiet and they're actually trying to use this one for their use for their areas. Uh, any questions, comments for your Jamie as we clap for him? Okay, that is everybody have understood very well. Thank yes, God. That, that's why they're quiet. That's why they're yeah. quiet, but they're very happy. And uh, if you may, we can also take a group photo and give you a certificate <laughs> because it's amazing work. Yeah. Thank you very much. And I've shared the script with everybody uh, so that they can actually follow up. And if they have questions, still direct them to us and we see how to resolve it. So if you can just uh, stop yeah, sharing exactly. and uh, we take a group photo for this amazing audience. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking also Dr. Kelebogi would like to try this uh, in the Okavango area. Uh, some other persons might try also to try it somewhere else. So there's uh, many opportunities uh, for us to continue. Yeah, we can still ameliorate the system. Adding some other elements is possible. But it can take uh, more than one hour. So that means that we can we can add some change detection because to confirm that uh, an area is flooded is not just one period. We can take uh, up to, let's say up to five, five different years of period and confirm whether it's really an area that is just uh, one occasion. We cannot just say that it's always affected. Because this one is normal because it's a, it's a river. There are some areas that are just for one year have been affected and maybe they can they will not get it again. So we can get some different period of time so that we can be able to see, okay, we confirm and say by and confirm strongly that okay, this area is a, an area that can be affected. Yes, and yes. also later put so and compare with the, the 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 rainy rainy data of the area. That allow us to be really strong in our confirmations, telling that this area is uh, is prone to to floods. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you so much, my question. professor. Uh, we have a question from Victoria. Otherwise, uh, you can just stop your screen sharing. Um, okay. What what informed the choice for the threshold for um, the high risk or the medium risk? areas to be 50, 50 meters and 100 meters? Yeah, you, when we're talking about, actually we use elevation. Let us go, let, let me show you the data that we have. So we can see that the lowest area, you can see the lowest area, the color is green. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we said that the area that are lesser than 50 or to 50 is a low area. So it's an area prone to flood. Okay. And the one that's from 50, uh, from 100 upwards is highly, is uh, the area that can be affected or low. Immediately that is medium, that is slightly affected after hundreds. So we can see here that those areas are high elevation. That is uh, up to 150. So we say that we want the data we want and call it the area that is slightly highly uh, high is uh, above hundreds, 100 meter of elevation. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, also, this... hello? So from this code, then I think maybe we should have added a condition to, it seems as if the, the high risk areas are also being counted in the medium. Um, okay, we can introduce some other element to get more information. Yeah, just to limit the differentiate between the high and the medium. And therefore, okay, we can see Colin, I know that you have been here, we, we work together. We can see work together again. So that we bring it, we bring it in, and uh, all the suggestions will be welcome. Okay. I think we still need to work on it and get something more and uh, strong. Thank you, Victoria, and thank, thank you, you very much. much.
I think we, if you can stop sharing your screen and we take group photo before everyone disappears okay. on the one hour. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, very grateful uh, for this work and also thanking uh, uh, Victoria for the help with the scripts and Edward and all participants. And also thanking uh, all the colleagues at uh, Afrigist for making this training possible and workshop. And hopefully we'll be able to repeat the same for one area like uh, area in uh, Botswana, an area of our choice uh, from everybody here. So I've just captured for the photos which I've been able to get as I was waiting for one and only Mr. Soma. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Yes, so I'm taking the last one and uh,